hello and good evening. Um, so my name is Matthew Olson, and I'm the Dean of Liberal Arts. And I'm very pleased to welcome you here to Middlesex uh, on this beautiful evening for our, our uh, World of Music concert series for this very special performance, The Black Cat, a Halloween concert. Uh, I promised myself I would not use the word spooktacular event, so I will not <laughs> say that. Um, but I want to welcome you for coming out tonight uh, and supporting the arts and supporting our music program. So let's give a round of applause. Oh. I'll just remind you to silence your cell phones or any devices that you have so we can hear the music uninterrupted. And again, welcome. Thank you.
Expect or solicit belief for the most wild narrative which I am about to tell. Yet mad I am not, and surely do I not dream. My purpose is to place before the world a series of mere household events. In their consequences, these events have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed me.
but ill used my pets. However, I still regained sufficient regard for Pluto to restrain me from maltreating him. But my disease grew upon me. What disease is like alcohol? And at length, even Pluto began to experience the effects of my ill temper. One night, returning home, much intoxicated, I fancied that the cat avoided my presence. about its neck and hung it to the limb of a tree. Hung it with the tears streaming down my eyes. Hung it because I knew that it had loved me. And because I felt it had given me no reason of offense. Hung it because I knew that in so doing I was committing a sin. from sleep. It 
did not fail to make a deep impression upon my fancy. I went so far as to regret the loss of the animal and to look about me for another pet of the same species and of somewhat similar appearance. One night, as I sat half stupefied in a den of more than infamy, my attention was suddenly drawn to some black object. resembling him in every respect but one. Pluto had not a white hair upon any portion of his body, but this cat had a large, although indefinite, splotch of white covering nearly the whole region of the breast. Upon my touching him, he immediately arose, purred loudly, rubbed against my hand, prepared to go home, the Ivana evinced a disposition to accompany me. When it reached the house, it domesticated itself at once, and it became immediately a great favorite with my wife. For my own part, I soon found a dislike to it arising within me. By slow degrees, these feelings of disgust and annoyance rose into the bitterness of hatred. Gradually, very gradually, I came to look upon it with unutterable loathing and to flee silently from its odious presence as from the breath of a pestilence.
literally throwing me headlong, exasperating me to madness. Uplifting an axe, I end the blow at the animal. But this blow was arrested by the hand of my wife. Goaded by the interference into a rage, I withdrew my arm from her grasp. This hideous murder accomplished, I set myself to the task of concealing the body. I determined to wall it up in the cellar, as the monks of the Middle Ages are recorded to have walled up their victims. For a purpose such as this, the cellar was well adapted. I made no doubt that I could readily displace the bricks in one wall, insert the corpse, and wall up the hole as before so that no eye could detect anything suspicious. When I had finished, my next step was to look for the beast which had been the cause of so much wretchedness, for I had firmly resolved to put it to death. present itself. assassination, a party of the police came very unexpectedly into the house and proceeded to make a rigorous investigation of the premises. ascended the steps. I delight to have allayed your suspicions. By the by, gentlemen, this... This is a well-constructed house. I may say an excellently well-constructed house. These walls... Are you going, gentlemen? These walls are solidly put together. 
here through the mere frenzy of bravado. I rapped heavily with a cane upon that very portion of the brickwork behind which stood the corpse of my wife. No sooner had the reverberation of my blows sunk into silence than I was answered by a voice from within the tomb, by a cry at first muffled and broken, like the sobbing of a child, and quickly swelling into one long, loud, and continuous scream, utterly inhuman, a howl, a wailing shriek. Half of horror and half of triumph, such as might have risen only out of hell from the throats of the damned in their agony, and of the demons that exult in the damnation. I'm 